Today we're going to be talking about, we're on section three. And I'm actually working, I'm actually teaching you guys from a workbook called Get Off Your Ass and Start Your Business. Okay? But it's not available yet. But it was available before I took it off. I took it down. So if anybody wants it, they can DM me and I'll send you the link. You can purchase it, but it's not the link. It's not in my link. It's not in my bio. Okay. So we were talking about we talked about writing a business plan. We, which I didn't go into detail about that because I don't want to. Um, and we talked about funding your business. Last time we talked about funding your business. Today we're going to talk about. We talked about the different. The differences between an S Corp and C Corp, and we talked about the um, the why you shouldn't do business at DBA. Okay, now we're gonna get to the good good stuff. A team. All right. Let me just say this. In a real estate, in real estate, you will need a team. There is, everybody says there's no I in team. Well, there isn't. So you have to do this with a team, with a partnership. And I know I just said I had a partnership and it fell apart and it wasn't the best situation for us to be in. So the partnership dismantled. That's not a problem. Do I still, I still have an assistant right now. I still have an attorney right now. I still have a contractor. I still have all the players they're just not partners now they're contracted employees so instead of where i had a partner who would do this and a partner who would do that i now have a contractor that's that i'm writing a check to i now have an assistant that i'm writing a check to i now have people in different states jv partners that i'm writing checks to and i have an attorney that i'm writing a check to because these are the people I need on my team in order to do this. I don't know anything about the law, so I hire an attorney. I don't know anything about accounting, so I hire an accountant. I don't know, my assistant does my wholesaling business. I'm gonna tell you like this, I haven't talked to anybody in probably a month as far as wholesaling goes. So you have to know what to do. And even with my, even with my Airbnbs, I had to have a cleaner, I have to have a maintenance guy I can't just and I have to have backup cleaners because what happens if the cleaner just because she's the best cleaner on the planet doesn't mean when she gets sick she just she's gonna get sick she's gonna have to go on vacation yesterday was my cleaner's wedding anniversary you think I wanted her to clean my apartment on her anniversary you think she was gonna do it no so you have to make sure you have a team now I hope you guys have pen and paper because I'm gonna go through this really quickly and I want you guys to all know what it is okay now first things first you never and I said never build your team based on where you start you build your team based on where you want to go say it again you don't build your team where you start you build your team based on where you want to go so you build your team for expansion you build your team for growth okay all right now what used to what people used to say to me all the time is, and I used to say it all the time I can't afford to buy I can't afford to hire this person I can't afford to hire that person you can't afford not to be real honest now in the beginning you're gonna be everything when I first started wholesaling we'll just start there when I first started my wholesaling business I was making phone calls. I was building lists. I was driving for dollars. I was skip tracing. I was the point caller. I was going to see the houses. I was running numbers. I was making offers. I was a transaction coordinator. I followed up on all the contracts. I followed up with all the buyers and I followed up with all the, uh, and I followed up with all the sellers. So I was everything. Then once I got my first deal closed my second deal closed and i started seeing the amount of money that i could make just off those two deals my first deal was six thousand four hundred thirty nine dollars my second deal my second wholesale deal i think was probably five so that was eleven thousand dollars in just two deals within two months 
You see what I'm saying? So I then realized I made $11,000 in two months. Hmm. How much does a dialer cost? Dialer was $150 a month. But I just made $11,000. So you calculate that. Hmm. They had a special going on a dialer. If I paid the year up front, 150 times 12, that's 1800 but they said, oh, if you paid it, if you paid a year up front, we'll do it for twelve hundred. I just made eleven thousand dollars. Now, if I paid twelve hundred of that, that's lo that's a little bit more than ten percent. But guess what? I now have a dialer to perform my duties for the whole entire year. You don't think I'm gonna keep using that dialer all year long? Now I don't have to worry about anything else. I can just do that dialer. PropStream is ninety-seven dollars a month. They have it where if you buy it for the year, you get it for like $900 or $899 or $875 or something crazy like that. So guess what? You buy it for the year. So with that $11,000 check, I bought my prop stream for the year. I brought my dialer for the year. I skip trace still. Okay. So now I'm going and I'm skip tracing and I'm finding all these numbers. And I'm calling and I'm making more deals. And now I got another deal. Okay, so now I got another deal. This deal, I made $10,000 in one deal. What do you think I did? Now I'm hiring a VA. VA is a virtual assistant. Now I can pull numbers from PropStream. I can pull a list of 5,000 numbers now. I can then hand them to my VA to skip trace and for her to make phone calls on and now she's just going to send me the lead. So now all I have to do is talk to people who are interested in selling their house. She can get all the hang up calls. She can get all the left messages. She can figure out who's got a good number and who doesn't. I am list. I am doing the phone call, the hot lead. I'm talking to that seller and I'm negotiating. I'm talking to that seller and I'm making an appointment to go see the house. That's what I wanted to do. I didn't have time between flipping houses, this Airbnb business. I don't have time, my real estate brokerage, I did not have time to sit and go be on the phone on a dialer all day. I didn't have that type of time. So I let it, but guess what? By her doing that, she's calling four hours a day, five days a week. So she's calling, I'm sorry, six days a week. She's calling 24 hours a day. 24 hours for the week. Wanna know how many phone calls she's making in a day? She's making about 250 phone calls a day. Wanna know how many I was making? Probably about 25. Cause I'm calling in between doing everything else. So I couldn't not, I couldn't go on not having her on my team. So now I have a virtual assistant. Guess what? Now I also have a executive assistant. Someone who answers my phone, schedules my appointments, does all this stuff. And you know what? She is the one now who calls that hot lead and schedules appointments nationwide. Oh, but Delisa, you don't live in Michigan. You don't live in Detroit. You're right. I don't. But I make damn good money in those other states. Now, my assistant, Tamara, Tamara is now the person who's talking to the seller and getting and arranging appointments. She's on the phone right now with my JV partners in Ohio and Michigan and Memphis and Charlotte and wherever else I got them going on. She's the one talking to them and making arrangements. She's the one calling these attorneys at once a week, making sure all of our transactions are on point. Delisa is free to generate more money. So I couldn't not afford to have these two people on my team once I started making money. But if you're not making money and you belong to the broke by broke fraternity or sorority, depends on what you want to be, then I suggest you do the simple things first. Drive for dollars, that type of thing. You, I, you got a credit card, you got $5,000, start an Airbnb, get paid every day through PayPal. I just got a notification about an hour ago saying that PayPal deposited the money I made. The person checked in yesterday, I got paid today. So that's the type of thing you wanna do. You wanna set yourself up for those types of situations, okay? All right. Now, so you don't build your business based on where you're going to start. You build your business and your team for where you want to go. All right. And you want people that are going to help you grow. So you got to be careful about the type of 
Now, a lot of people say you can't work with family. That's a lie. I don't believe in that. I don't subscribe to it. It depends on who the family members are, what type of skill sets they have. Are you being clear in your directives? That's family can work for you. Family can really work for you if you have it all together. And if you don't feel like you can work with your family, don't hire your family. You know what your family is capable of. Like, really, you know what your family is capable of. All right? Now, uh, da, 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 da. all right, so first things first, you're going to need with your real estate investment business. You're going to need an attorney. You're going to need three attorneys. Number one is a real estate attorney. You need a real estate attorney that specializes in whatever you come up with. People ask me all the time, what does your attorney specialize in? Whatever I come up with. Whatever I come up with. Okay? So if I say, hey, you know what? I was thinking about doing and structuring this deal this way. He will read my policy. He will read my procedure. He will see if I'm legit, if it's legal. And then he will write up a contract and say, yep, we can do it. And he said, hey, if it work, it work. And we push it through. You need an attorney that is specializes in investment real estate investment not just real estate sales because a real estate investment attorney will not a real estate investment attorney will understand wholesaling they will understand a seller finance they will understand a subject too they will understand a lease option a regular attorney who does straight laced vanilla white bread real estate transactions for homeowners is not going to understand that they're not. So there it is. All right. Okay, pumpkins. All right. You also will need, and not only that, you're going to need a real estate attorney. You're going to need a business attorney. Why do I need a business attorney, Delisa? Because you will be sued. It's, it's, it's bound to happen. So you're going to be sued. You will be sued. You'll be sued by a tenant. You'll be sued by an investor. You'll be sued by a bank. You're going to be sued by somebody. You will be sued. Believe me. And you need a um, tax attorney. That's obvious. Your tax attorney is to keep you out of that pretty orange jumpsuit. And they should be able to tell you the difference between tax evasion and tax avoidance. Tax avoidance is legal. Tax evasion will have you with some nice silver bracelets and an orange jumpsuit. Now, once you hire your attorneys, you also need to, and you might not need them right away, but you need to start investigating who you need. You're going to need a real estate attorney right away. You're going to need your business attorney right away because you want them to help you structure your business so that you go a certain way. Or you might want to take your tax attorney right away, whichever one. You need to consult with and look them up and try to find them out, okay? Don't forget, guys, if you have questions, drop them in the comments. I am going to answer. I am answering questions as I see them pull up. So if you have questions, you can ask those questions now. Um, if you want to get this workbook that I'm working from, just DM me. Hey, I want that workbook and I'll send you the link for the workbook because it's currently not available for sale on my site. And don't forget, we got our Airbnb workshop tomorrow. So, now we talked about the attorneys. Let's talk about the accountant. And you need a CPA. You don't need a bookkeeper. You don't want somebody that just prepared your taxes. You need a CPA. A CPA will call you and say, hey, Delisa, you need to get rid of about $30,000 off your books by this date in order to not have a higher tax bill for the end of the year. That's what tax accountants do. Okay? Because every month you're sending a statement and every quarter they're preparing your taxes. If you have an S corp or a C corp, they're preparing your taxes and they're sending a check to the IRS on your behalf or they're telling you how much you need to write the check for and bring it to their office so you can get this money taken care of. That's what tax accountants do. That's what CPAs do. Okay. Now you don't need a bookkeeper. 
You should have, well, you can have a bookkeeper, but you can also use QuickBooks. Or you can get a bookkeeper that uses QuickBooks and you can, they can just go through and audit your stuff and make sure everything is right. It's up to you. Now, you will need an administrative assistant. For me, that's Tamara. And she's also a licensed real estate agent. Yep. So you want somebody, your, as far as your assistant goes, you want somebody who's going to help you scale up. They're going to be able to know what's, what to do every day. They're going to have to be able to run your business when you're not capable of running your business. They're going to have to be able to be self-starters. And they're going to have to be able to do this with little to no direction. All right. And you have to be able to train this person. And that's the problem a lot of you have because you don't know how to train a person. You want to hurry up and get all these people, but then you don't know what they're supposed to do so you don't train them properly. And then you wonder why your business isn't growing because they don't know what to do. The reason why they don't know what to do is because you don't know what you're doing. Write your processes and procedures down and we'll talk about that later. And learn how to listen. That's what your assistant should be able to do. Learn how to listen. Some great team characteristics and then we're going to be done. Like I said, I'm taking questions. Team member characteristics that you will need is this. They must have a passion for your business. Just like when we all grew up and said, hey, I want to be a lawyer. Hey, I want to be a doctor. How does novations work explain novations because i might be calling it something different so when you um so you want to have somebody who had like when you when we were all little kids we all said what we wanted to be when we grow up so you had a passion for it as you got older that thing might have changed and did something different but you had a passion, whatever it is you went to college for, whatever it is what you went to trade school for, whatever business you started, whatever stock market, passive income you have, you have a passion for it. You have to hire people who have the same type of energy that you have, not just for your business, but for the process of building their own business as well. Okay, so it may not be their dream job, but they should still perform the duties accordingly. They have to be able to listen. Real estate is 99% about relationships and 1% about what you know. It's 99% relationships. People don't do business with, they don't buy your products because it's a great product. They buy the product because they're buying you. So you have to be able to listen. Your team members have to be able to listen. Think about this. Who has the best workforce in the country? I kid you not. This place has the best customer service, skilled workers, whatever, and it's Chick-fil-A. Everybody talks about how great the employees at Chick-fil-A are, right? Everybody talks about that. I was just talking about it yesterday. So that's why you have to say, you have to be able to know what that process is. You So you want those type of people, people who are for your mission, vision, and values. They have the same mission, vision, and values that your company embodies. So you wanna hire those types of people because if you take, and you take care of those people, because if you take care of your employees, your employees will take care of your customers and your clients. And that's a given, any given day. Get people who know how to follow directions. And I'm gonna give you a perfect example. When I'm on Facebook, I'll say, Hey, I'm looking for JV partners who will do this. And I'll give the description. And then I'll say, you know what? If you're interested, DM me. And I'll post it. And 99 people will comment. I'm interested. I'm interested. I'm interested. I'm interested. Guess who I ignore? Those 99 people that say they're interested. Guess who has my attention? The people who actually follow the directions. Because now I see you know how to follow directions. And I won't be so, I won't have to keep telling you how to do stuff. 
over and over and over because you follow directions the first time. A lot of people do that. A lot of a lot of employers are doing that. They'll put something on Facebook saying, hey, we're hiring and we're doing this and they'll give you specific instructions. And the problem is y'all don't read. That's why you don't follow the directions. It's not because you can't comprehend what the directions are. You didn't follow. You read, I'm looking for JV partners, bam, right there, and you stopped. Oh, I'm interested in being her JV partner. Oh, I've seen her numbers. I'm interested in doing I'm interested in working with her. And what happens is you didn't read the last part where it says, if you're interested, please DM me your qualifications. How long have you been in real estate? How long have you done this? How long have you done that? Or email me your inbox me your email address and I'll send you the questionnaire that I need you to fill out before I can determine if we need to go any further. See, you don't read. Stop doing that. Or you'll skim through it real quick and say, oh, she said DM me, but I'm just going to put my comment here. So that's what I mean by you guys are not reading. You're not doing what you're supposed to do. Okay? So start reading and you probably make a lot of more. You might probably might make a lot more money if you started reading. Now, another thing, if you guys see me looking off, there's two reasons. One, over here, Instagram. Over here, Facebook. Over here, my notes. <laughs> so, you want somebody who's going to be punctual. That's important, especially in real estate. When we say be there at, I'll tell, I got one client, <laughs> and I'm not going to say his name because he might be on here. But I have one client, I will tell him, 20 minutes ahead of time ahead of the scheduled time for the appointment just to make sure he's on time every single time if his appointment is at 1 30 i will tell him it's at one o'clock because i know he's going to be late he has never been on time for an appointment ever so that's why you do it hey rebecca how you doing that's why that's how you do that and that's why it's out there like that so you have to make sure they're going to be on time I did it last night. My friends, now everybody knows my birthday was last month because you know, Gemini season, we was last month. So my birthday was June 5th. I was in Atlanta where I spent my birthday in Atlanta, hanging out with my family and stuff like that. So when, um, so yesterday my, my friends was like, we haven't celebrated your birthday, we're gonna go out. So we went out to dinner last night I was in charge of picking the restaurant and making a reservation. So I made the reservation for 7.15. And I got a couple friends that like to be late. So I told them the reservation was for 7 o'clock. Sometimes you do what you have to do to get the results that you need. So that's what I did. And guess what? When I showed up at 7.10, five minutes before my reservation, so I was still on time. They were all there, and the first thing my one friend says, you're late. No, sweetie, I'm not. I'm actually on time. Because <laughs> I know y'all, and I want to make sure y'all was going to be on time. So that's what you do. So there it is. That's, why, that's what you have to do. So learn how to work your people and get the best out of them. Okay? You need people in your positions with strong leadership skills. And the reason they might not be running nothing, but you want them, to, you want to make sure they're able to run something in your absence. That's why you need people with strong, strong leadership skills. And they have to be able to work with others. You have to be able to play nice in the sandbox. Please and thank you. Please and thank you. Say it again with a smile. All right. Because you. I just said, real estate is about relationships. Now imagine me as your real estate agent or the wholesaler or your attorney or anybody, and I'm helping you with a deal. If I'm helping you with this transaction, the first thing you're gonna say is, okay, what time, where am I supposed to be? How am I supposed to go about this? And you don't want me, you don't want to call your attorney and they say, well, who's your agent? And they go, well, Delisa Robinson, I'm like, ooh. There is an attorney right now. My attorney refuses to take any deal that has this attorney on the other side. He won't do it. 
He told me point blank. I'm not doing it. If this attorney is on the other side of this deal, you need to go somewhere else because I'm not doing your transactions. He refuses to work with him. I have clients that refuse to work with this attorney. They point blank said, if this is who you're using as the attorney, I don't want to be bothered. Yep. So you have to make sure that you are building nice relationships in the real estate streets because it's not it's not that crowded out here in these streets. It's a lot of people playing in the street, but it's not that crowded. Everybody know everybody. And everybody's going to ask a question. Everybody's going to say something about you. Everybody's going to talk to you crazy. Sometimes you might catch somebody on the wrong day. They might say something to you. You can't <laughs> clap back like you want to all the time. So you have to do that. Sometimes a novation is called a Hail Mary. We don't have to discuss that. Well, you're supposed to be calling me anyway, right? So we'll discuss that when we get on the phone. So you have to be able to do that. So that's what you want to do. All right. Now, you want somebody that's goal-oriented and can communicate effectively. They have to be able to understand what you're talking about. They have to understand the lingo of the industry. They have to be able to give you, they have to be able to talk on different levels to people. And you have to be able to address the least sophisticated consumer. So if you have a new person, a new person who's never bought a house before, they don't know the first thing about what they're doing to buy a house, you need that person. Okay, you need that person. So what you're going to say is you want to be able to talk on different levels. You might have somebody who's buying apartment complexes versus somebody who's just buying a house. You need to be able to talk on a different levels. You have to. It's, it's a no-brainer. You're going to have to. And you want somebody that's goal-oriented goal and results-driven. Goal-oriented. My brokerage, just to give you guys an idea, my real estate brokerage where I hire other agents to come in and do real estate transactions under my brokerage, okay? We have a commission split. The commission split, and I'm not afraid to tell anybody what it is, the, complete, the commission split is 95-5, meaning 95 goes to the agent, 5% comes to me, the broker. And people are like, how are you able to function that way? Da, da, da. Because I have all these other streams of income to offset whatever I need. That's how. But anyway, we have a goal per quarter. The quarter just started January, July 1st. So these agents who work under my brokerage, they have a goal that they have to hit. By the end of the quarter, in order for their commission split to stay 95-5. If they miss that goal, it goes to 80-20. See how that works? Guess what? We've been at 95-5 for over a year because I set parameters in place. I put board, I put in ground rules. I put in a structure. The structure is you get to keep 95% of your money if you hit these numbers, as long as we're hitting our numbers, there's no need for me to go up and down with the thing. And it's just flat across the board. Everybody that comes in, I don't care how much money, how much you sold this day, that day, next day, whatever. Everybody gets the same commission structure. Okay. Now, the results is we are making more sales. We're getting more people. We're putting our name out in the street. We're not, they're making more money. You see what I'm saying? I'm able to put money into the brokerage. I mean, I mean, when I take that 5% and invest it back into them, I get people to come in and teach different classes. I keep coming, I get people to come in and say, hey, do you want to do this? I have certain agents who might work for the property management side of my brokerage, or I got people who might work for just the brokerage. I got wholesalers. The wholesalers have goals too. So you have to put your, your expectations out and then you have to inspect what you expect. If you expect it, you have to inspect it to make sure it's getting done. That's where it is. All right, now, I'm done. That's it for tonight. We talked about team building. You need an accountant, you need an assistant, you need a virtual assistant once you get to that point. You need an attorney. 
What else you need? Depends on what type of what type of business you're in. You need an accountant, an attorney. Oh, and you need a money person, a lender. Everybody needs a money man. See? All right. Now, for those of you I told to inbox me, don't forget to inbox me. For those of you who are interested in joining me tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for the five for day one of the five day short term rental workshop, click the link in the bio, tap the first button, and poop poop. Join me. Hey, Teron, how you doing? Hey, listen, I gotta call your cousin. I ain't talked to her in a minute. Gotta make sure she all right. See if she wanna go on this trip with me next year. So that's where we are. If you guys have any, any questions and you think about it later, DM me. Another thing I'm gonna ask you to do is this. Turn your notifications on so you know when a girl is going live or you can text the word DIVA in all caps to 716 306 3316 and I you will get a text message when I go live. And I even send out links now because like I said, Facebook shut me down, y'all. It's it's so crazy. Not only did they shut me down, then the guy who hacked into my account, not only did he shut me down, he hacked in through my business manager account. And through my business manager account, he had access to my credit card and politely charged a thousand dollars worth of stuff. So, yeah, it is. It just never ends. Then they tried to get my um. Then they tried to get my Cash App card going. And I was like, oh, let me shut all this down. So today I spent my normal Sunday where I'm relaxing and getting ready for the week and doing all this other stuff. I spent it basically talking to the fraud department at Bank of America, shutting everything down. Cash app too. Cash app was pretty good about it though. They got they they were able to help me out. Facebook has been a problem. I can't, I have to prove I'm me. How do you do that without sending your ID? So I send in my ID. No, that's not a valid ID. What? It's the only ID I got. Don't you want my passport? That's it. Yeah, Facebook has no customer service. There's not a live person you can talk to. But I finally figured out how to get a live person to at least email me. So we've been going back and forth through email to get everything worked out. So far, so good. I can go live because this is my Facebook page over here, my Facebook business page. I cannot post. I cannot like. I can't comment. I cannot share. So I'm restricted on Facebook, but I can go live. So I'll be going live a lot on the Facebook page to tell you guys exactly what it is that I'm doing. All right. Now told you to stick with me don't forget um the links will be out later this week probably by wednesday for the monthly master class we'll be talking about five ways to build a portfolio using little to no money down and out of pocket i should say no little to no money out of pocket as well as not having to do, deal with your credit so you might want to be in on that class because i'm going to go into detail about some things all right, so I will talk to you guys later. Also, Hammers and Heels, the Hammers and Heels Elite Mentorship Program is open. We are taking register registrants into the program. The program is $499 a year, or you can do monthly installments of $47. You can click the link in the bio and take advantage of that as well. But... <laughs> Tomorrow, be in the Airbnb short terminal course. You definitely want to be in that because not only will I be giving you the workbook, the five days of live instruction, the back end, we're going to teach you how to research, analytics, automations, setting everything up. I'm also going to give you a list of uh, apartment complexes that will allow, I'm going to give you a list of five that will allow Airbnb. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. So, divas and dudes, ladies and gents, boys and girls, I am going to leave you now. I'm going to go play a game on my iPad for a little bit. I just got an email about a contract I got coming up for an apartment complex. So, I got to take care of that before I go to sleep tonight. It is 945. Time for me to sign off. But I always sign off with this. You can be anything you want in this world. I just hope you choose to be kind because at some point in your life, Someone was kind to you, and it's always good to pay kindness forward. So I hope you pay it forward. Have a great night. God bless you. Mwah.